Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. I just finished this two week project of a mech that takes care of a plant on an alien planet and this is the full build video of it. As always, I started this project searching in my now called Projects Ideas box and on it I knew I had a shape that I've been saving for more than a decade, this transparent plastic dome and some other great pieces of course. Then I started putting everything together to form the body of this mech. The shapes I chose for this project were mostly round and where they were lacking detail I added some 3D printed detailed rings. Pretty quickly I solved the body shape and started working on the inside where the plant would be living. For that I chose this white needle dispenser shape for its great details. And to glue these ABS or PLA pieces I'm using super glue. I then used this cutting compass to cut a perfectly round styrene panel that I used to cover an open hole on the bottom of the body. And with that, the basic shape of the robot was finished. The white needle dispenser gribbly looked very good, but I couldn't simply add a plant on the top of it, it needed some sort of a vase, something where I could attach this organic shape later. I wanted a pretty controlled environment look, like a precisely maintained bonsai on the middle of a sci-fi room, and not a chaotic biome. So I glued a couple of round pieces from my collection and a fake Lego piece right in the middle to make an attachment point for this plant that at that point I had no idea of how I was going to build. One last tap on the upper section of this unit before I could move to the legs was to add a finishing touch on the top of the dome. A convex shape with a gentle curve was going to be perfect for that job. I glued a pin on it that I would use to attach it later and I drilled a hole on the dome, as careful as possible. The body pieces were then primed just so I could check the level of detail and overall look and I could move on to the next stage of the project. which was the legs, a combination of amazing gribblies from my collection and a bunch of custom made connecting printed pieces. Having multiples of found items is almost impossible, so in this leg I kept it simple using mostly beads and parts from ink pens. Now, I won't lie, this is a super time consuming process of choosing the shapes and trying to imagine how they are going to go together precisely. This part of the creative process is kinda hard to show on video, so I never really did it justice. Not only that, it takes a lot of back and forth to them satisfied with the design, a ton of cutting, sanding and testing of shapes that as I mentioned, having multiples of is already a challenge. Now fortunately for this project I wanted to achieve a cute look, this is not a menacing or a war unit, so that makes things much easier and to achieve that look I went for kind of a tubular leg. On processes like this I can waste hours or days finding the perfect design, but once I get it making all next segments is much quicker. With the legs finished I could work on a few extra attachments for this robot to work properly, beginning with an external battery pack, nothing too crazy cause I don't wanna divert much attention from the plant inside. I opened that grey ferrite core only to glue it back shut with some CA glue. On its surface I added a few detailed shapes to hide some of its flaws, cover some big holes and weird features. 
in a custom made piece makes the inner face from the grey shape to the diameter of the body. Everything is then connected together with a simple 3mm plastic rod. Now, just like battery packs, there's one extra thing that I love to include in my models tiny little arms, and for that, there's no better piece than the painting portion of Wi Fi antennas. My idea is that this unit uses its arm to grab stuff, manipulate tools, and interfere with the outside world, doing everything it can to keep the planet alive. Pretty quickly I was able to put it together, and just as I did on the battery pack, a custom piece makes the interface from the arm to the outside diameter of the body. Only this time a bigger plastic rod makes the connection, and with that, the robot was ready for the final coat of primer. Now let me take you on another adventure, that of making a base for this build. Of course the wood base I had ready was too big for the job, so I had to trim it down first. So I decided on a diameter, marked the surface with a compass and went for my jigsaw. Pretty messy. With the size right, I wanted to create a rocky empty planet texture, conveying the idea that keeping that plane alive is a hard thing to do. I had this idea in the back of my mind of using plastic bags with body filler to obtain a rock texture, but mine was so old and somehow it cured inside of the jar. So I of course went looking for alternatives. Here in my shop, I had a big bucket of this putty that's used to build walls, like the final layer on a brick wall. I've never once used this thing for anything other than walls, but I decided to give it a go. Maybe I would discover a new material. And if anything, this thing was free. You can never beat free stuff. I grabbed the thickest plastic bag I had around and made some texture on it, and then I applied a nice coat of putty on the wood base. The plastic bag then came on top to try to add the texture to the putty layer, but at that point I had no idea if the thing was going to work or not. Now, different from the body filler, this wall putty thing takes a long time to settle, so while I was waiting, I went for a quick final detail pass on the robot, you know, just to add a few rivets here and there and reach a nicer level of detail overall. Again, nothing too crazy in terms of detail, cause this project already had the cute look I was going for, but I had free time anyways. Now, even after like 4 hours, this thing wasn't going anywhere, cause of course it needs air to set, what a dumb thing to do. So I kinda gave up on the plastic bag texture, I'll try that again in the future. But to be perfectly honest, when I removed the plastic, I saw some holes that were made from trapped air under the plastic bag, and I kinda liked it, it's an alien planet, so yeah, nobody can say it's wrong, so yeah, you can stop typing right there. Now I can finally go for the painting process. Now here where I live, I don't have access to good paint for a reasonable price, so I use cheap acrylics. This means terrible paint coverage, and to make my life easier, I go over all pieces with a coat of matte white spray paint. My office printer is out of ink, and so I made a 3D printed stencil for the top of the dome. It's a great technique that has its limitation, but is a nice solution for some quick stencils. On curved surfaces like this one, lines might end up kind of blurry, not as sharp as you'd want, but you can kind of quickly solve that with a brush going over the edges with the base color. In this project, I also did my favorite chipping technique, which is to actually chip the paint, showing the primer coats below. 
I feel like with this technique I can achieve the most realistic scratches and marks by actually damaging the paint job. And after that the project went through a quick acrylic wash session where I throw a lot of thin paint on the model, I clean it and repeat the process as many times as needed. And in this project I use this metallic paint that comes on a pen, specifically on the cloth to achieve a realistic metal look. You can use it as a pen but you can also squeeze the paint out and use a brush, pretty awesome stuff. Speaking again about the cheap acrylics I use in my models, there's one extra downside to it, as the paint has so little pigment and as the matte varnish also kinda kills the saturation by the end of the painting process, I sometimes end with a model that is super dull and uninteresting. Now to counter that, this time I kind of chose a super saturated lime color, hoping that after all of the painting process I was left with a more saturated base, and I'm happy to say I was able to do that. Then I of course signed the model, the first one of this year, and started to put everything together. And there's one extra structure that I added to the base, one last idea that I decided to try. This is a sort of a probe that the robot added to the rocky planet to extract things you needed to keep the plane alive. A very simple structure that is basically a combination of tubular griblies glued together that will be sitting under the claws of the robot, kinda like it is just going to grab it. And with that I was just going to close the dome and this project was fit. Wait a minute, where's the plant? Now let me tell you, making the plant was a journey on itself, including a failed attempt. Let me show you. So my first idea was to try to make a super organic plant, of course all plants are organic but you get the idea, using some copper wire and this cloth kinda wire rope thing. Yeah, my idea was to try to avoid using epoxy putty which is kinda toxic and instead using copper and rope with a lot of sea glue and the result was kinda okay I think, except the fact that when I primed the thing some imperfections started to show up, but I think there's something here, this is an idea for a different project and maybe even a different scale I think. For this one though, not good. So then I decided to go for the solution that I should have went from the beginning, of course some good old epoxy. Again I'm using some armature, this time this right there I think is aluminum not copper. Then I mix a bunch of epoxy putty and started adding that to the aluminum wire I just positioned. Now you guys will see the final result in just a minute, but this second try on making a plant is actually based on a real plant that we have around here, I even have one in my house. It is called the Rose of the Desert, a tiny cute little plant that is much simpler to model using epoxy and I should have went with this from the beginning. As you can see I kinda made the plant right in there on the top of the model, something that I was trying to avoid. But yeah, of course, as always, I was kind of running late with this project. Now the leaves of this plant were also made using epoxy. As you can see, I kind of spread a thin layer of epoxy on top of an acrylic piece. I drew the leaves and kind of added some texture with a toothpick. And then to make sure that the epoxy was going to set on an organic shape, I glued the leaves on the outside of a paint bottle. I didn't even prime the pieces and painted them right then and there. And then I went as careful as possible and made some tiny little holes on the top of the tree, let's say, and using a tiny drop of sea glue I positioned each leaf. 
added one extra leaf on the bottom of the base where the plant leaves, kinda like it just fell from the tree, and this model was finished. Thank you so much if you watched this far in the video, and I really hope you guys liked what you saw. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more of those 1-2 to two week simpler builds, and of course subscribe and like the video if you haven't already. A special thanks to all my patrons and YouTube members, you guys are amazing, and as always, thanks for watching.